Windows 10 is officially in a support October 2025. We're going to take a look at what this means for you. We'll take a look at the overall life cycle and then we'll look at Windows 11 and see whether or not that is for you and your PC is capable of going to Windows 11. We're going to talk a little bit about Windows 12 as well. We're also going to look at what it would cost you to stick around on Windows 10 for up to three more years and receive some ESU or extended security updates. And then, surprise, surprise, we'll talk about ditching Microsoft altogether and look at some alternative operating systems that may or may not fit your needs. All right, guys, so as it says here, October 14th, 2025, Microsoft will no longer provide security updates or technical support for Windows 10. Your PC will still work, but we recommend moving to Windows 11. So you have their recommendation, old Billy boy, Bill Gates. He would love for you to stick around in the Microsoft family and adopt the much-loved Windows 11. Now, full disclaimer, I don't hate Windows 11. Matter of fact, I kind of like it now. It's grown on me over the last year or so that I've been using it. I think it's got better with their different builds. 24H2 is coming out. I'm running that already in the Insider program. Um, it has its pros and cons. It's not perfect. No Microsoft operating system is perfect, obviously. But if you haven't tried it, at least give it a shot. All right, so that is... Well, actually, your first op option is a bad option, but obviously you could still use Windows 10. It says right there... Um, your computer will still work, right? Right here, PC will still work. However, you're obviously going to be vulnerable to any new vulnerabilities that are discovered in Windows 10. And think about it, if you're a hacker, if you're a bad guy, and you know Microsoft has you know, millions of people out there running Windows 10, and then the next day, boom, no more patches, guess what? You probably want to try to discover a new zero-day vulnerability for Windows 10. Because now once you have that, most people running Windows 10 at that point are going to be vulnerable because Microsoft just said they are no longer going to create any security patches for any new vulnerabilities discovered for Windows 10. So that's a good enough reason for me, if you're running it after this date, to get off of it at all costs, right? All right, but that is one option. Stick around and kind of uh, roll the dice and test your luck. Now, obviously, third-party antivirus, uh, EDR, MDR solutions will still function. It's just the operating system level vulnerabilities are going to have you in a little bit of hot water there. Okay, so here's the overall life cycle of Windows 10. It's been a good run, I would say, right? Pretty much a decade. Well, it will be over a decade that the operating system has been uh, in production. So from mid-2015 to late-2025. And I think this was a good step up for, at least I think a lot of you would agree from Windows 8, 8.1. Um, when Windows 8 first came out, I was like, this is a turd. This is a turd of an operating system. I don't like it. It's not my cup of tea, right? Give me Windows 7. Anyways, I think 10 was a good step up from 8. And I think some of you agree that Windows 11 is a good step up from 10, but I think a lot of you will disagree with that as well. So I think that's a mixed bag there. But here's the overall life cycle. Um, as you can see, as the build numbers come up, the um, they get phased out by the newer ones. So this is the latest and the last version of Windows 10. This is 22H2. Everyone should be on this by now. If you're not, you need to look into getting that updated because uh, the previous version of 21H2 hasn't got patches since June of 2023. So... If you're on 22H2, you will continue to get patches, like I said, through October 14th of 2025. All right, so now let's talk about your options. Obviously, what Microsoft recommends, and probably the, the easiest way, is to um, just upgrade to Windows 11. Now, the last time I checked, you can upgrade for free. They left the licensing server, our servers kind of open, in a sense, to where you can just go and go from Windows 10 to Windows 11 for free. So... You could do an in-place upgrade. You shouldn't lose any data. Now, before you do that, you do want to look at a couple things. You want to look at the system requirements, and you also want to look at uh, any obscure third-party applications that you might be running, or if you have any uh, one-off pieces of hardware. Maybe you plug in like a guitar or something. I don't know. Maybe you have some weird hardware that you're interfacing with your Windows 10 PC. Just look those up. Make sure they're going to run correctly on Windows 11. And then also look at the system requirements. I won't go over all these, but I'm going to give you the links to all these tabs that I have open, including this one. Uh, system requirements, the biggest things are probably the TPM 2.0. you got to make sure you have that. And then also, uh, I just did a video recently on 24H2 and a CPU requirement. Pretty interesting video. It's pretty popular right now. I'll link a card to that right here. Feel free to check that out. Basically, you need to have pop count, which is a hardware-level instruction for the CPU. 
Um, again, I kind of go technical in that video to talk about what that is and how to how to figure out whether or not you've got it. Um, because obviously, if you're going to go to Windows 11, you don't want to be on an old version of Windows 11. You're going to want to make sure that your hardware can continue to support the newer releases of Windows 11. Um, whole nother soapbox conversation there. They kind of, in my opinion, kind of pulled the rug on people a little bit in the middle of an operating system. Uh, if you're running Windows 11, your hardware was okay, and then all of a sudden, okay, now on this new version of Windows 11, or this new build of Windows 11, we're going to break your system. But anyway, check that video out. It kind of covers that in whole. But if you have pop count, and most processors that were made in the last 15 years or so are going to have pop count, but definitely check that out before you decide to upgrade to Windows 11. All right, so what's another option? Like I briefly talked about in the beginning there, if you want to fork over some money, Maybe you have a small business and you're running a bunch of Windows 10 PCs and you just can't afford to upgrade to Windows 11 or the hardware doesn't meet it or you have some legacy apps that won't run on Windows 11. Whatever your case is, trust me, I know. I've uh, been in that boat myself. If you can't upgrade to the next operating system for whatever reason, Windows does offer ESU, which is, I should say Microsoft, um, offers ESU, which is Extended Security Updates but it comes at a cost. <laughs> surprise, surprise. So for the first year, it's going to cost you $61 per computer. And then that doubles for the next two years. So $61 the first year, $122 the second year, and then $244 the third year. That's per computer. So if you've got a decent fleet out there, this could cost you a lot of money, guys. Now, they did do a nice thing, in my opinion, for schools. I think they should expand this to churches and nonprofits as well, but at least they've done it for schools. $1 per computer, and then it doubles to $2 and $4 the second and third year. That is per computer to get those ESUs or extended security updates uh, for three additional years on Windows 10. So that's nice if you are managing IT at a school district and you guys, you know, budget constraints happen, especially in this economy today. Um, you can't afford to do your entire fleet at once. You should have been planning for this already because you know the EOL date or the end of support date. But this gives you a little little longer of a runway to kind of phase out those Windows 10s and come up with your plan and execute to get on Windows 11. Or one of my other alternatives that we're going to talk about right now. All right, guys. So Windows 12. <laughs> surprise, surprise. It's coming. No one knows the exact date. But we've got some educated guesses. Probably going to see it late this year. Um, anywhere from October. My guess would be October 2024 to maybe February, March 2025. I think it'll probably be in Canary Insider Dev Build uh, late this year. That's my best guess. So if you want to kind of sit on the pot and wait, another option would be to go from Windows 10 to Windows 12. I don't know that there'll be an in-place upgrade. I doubt it. You'll probably have to do a clean install and migrate your data if you're on Windows 10 and going to 12. But this is an option. You can wait around and see when they release Windows 12 if you absolutely hate Windows 11. With that said, we haven't really seen 12 yet, so we don't know if you're going to love it or hate it. Um, but this, again, this is an option, right? So check out these requirements here. It gives you a little bit of information. And then, like I said, this is probably going to come out. I'm pretty sure this will be out before October 2025. I would anticipate a lot earlier than that. If we look at their release cycle, every three years, they're going to drop a new major operating system. Uh, so if they're going to stay in line with that, it would be late this year when they should be dropping Windows 12. But this is not a for sure, so take that into account as well. Um, you do have a little bit of time to weigh those options. I think if they don't make an announcement by early 2025, you should probably pivot and call an audible and go to 11 or look at ESU or another option. All right, so last but not least, guys, you could just give Microsoft the bird like many people have, um, even though they probably gave them the bird and they keep on using Windows because... Let's face it, a lot of times you just need Windows. There's not a good way around it. But if you don't necessarily require Microsoft Windows, try a new operating system. There's Mac if you're a billionaire. <laughs> um, it's very expensive. It's popular. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of Mac. Um, and I think part of that is I've never owned my own. I've worked on a couple. But uh, yeah, if you guys use Mac, let me know. I know there's a, a pretty big community for it, but it is expensive. You got to have money. Uh, proprietary hardware, all that type of stuff. So that's one option. Uh, maybe if you're like a lightweight user using mostly web apps, web apps and things like that, you could try going to something like a Chrome OS. Uh, probably not my best recommendation, but if it suits your needs, look into it. Now, I think the best recommendation, in my opinion, again, if you do not require Microsoft Windows for whatever reason, 
try a Linux distribution. And right now is a good time because you still have about uh, 17 months to get acquainted with Linux and check out some of the most popular distributions. I'll name a few uh, that I think would be good choices for you if you're coming from Windows. Uh, try Elementary OS, try MX Linux, try Zorin OS, try Linux Mint. There's a whole bunch more of them. I'm sure my community will chime in or feel free to chime in, please do, with some other Linux distributions that you think are good choices for users that are new to Linux and they're used to running Microsoft Windows on their PC. I'm going to link a video to the elementary OS uh, review that I did. I'll link that right now. Check that out. It's just one example of a very uh, beautiful Linux operating system that's open source, it's free, and it's very intuitive to new users. So I don't have to go on the command line and know all this fancy stuff, although I do like to do things that way from time to time. Um, but you can get in there as a new user, spin it up. You can run these live in most cases, so you don't have to install them all the way if you just want to kick the tires on them. And yeah, like I said, they're very intuitive. They have you know a dock that resembles like the taskbar, and things are just easy to find. Is what I'm trying to say, right? It resembles Windows. Uh, elementary resembles Mac OS. So check them out. You might find a Linux distribution that you like. There's a huge community out there for these open source Linux operating systems. So you can always find um, a good forum or Discord to jump in and you'll have support. You'll get, you know, you'll get uh, guidance if you can't find something or you don't know how something works. It's great to have that community out there. All right, guys. This was a quick video. I wanted to give you guys a reminder that again, Windows 10 is end of support October 2025. So if you're still running Windows 10, make sure you have a game plan sooner rather than later. If you have a, if you are in IT and you have a fleet out there that's on Windows 10, you better get a game plan together quick if you don't already have one. All right, so these were the options, guys. We talked about going to Windows 11. We talked about um, paying for ESU or extended security updates. Then we looked at uh, Windows 12, which probably is coming soon, but it's not a for sure. So that is, I would say that's an option. But again, if they don't make an announcement by early 2025, you need to call an audible and pick another choice. And then we talked about the absolute alternatives, which would be jumping ship from Microsoft and heading over to Mac OS, Chrome OS, or my favorite would be to uh, dump Microsoft and jump to Linux, which is free open source uh, operating systems or distributions, if you will. What are you guys going to do? If you're running Windows 10, let me know. Drop a comment and tell me what your game plan after Windows 10 goes end of life. Do me a favor, guys. If you stuck around at the end of the video, first of all, thank you. I appreciate it. Hit that thumbs up button. If you haven't done so already, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel. I'm shooting for 10,000 subs this year. Uh, we're starting to trend back in the right direction, so I'm going to keep plugging along. If you guys can keep clicking along there, if you're new, please subscribe. And um, I hope you all have a great day. Until the next one, take care, guys.